Hi, this is Tim Williams, Peninsula College Instruction and Reference Librarian. This tutorial connects you with online resources for citing and documenting sources using ACS style, and that's the Journal for the American Chemical Society. That's their publication style. So we're going to first connect with a reputable source of information um, presenting the rules for ACS style. So I'm just going to Google this phrase, ACS style guide, really quickly, and I'm going to look for a reliable source of information, preferably something from ACS itself. And if you look here, I've got an option, the ACS Style Guide, American Chemical Society Publication. So I always like to go to the horse's mouth. So let's go there and see if we have anything. And I happen to know from searching earlier that they have some sponsored access to select chapters from the ACS Style Guide, the third edition. So I'm going to scroll down to the References section, which is Chapter 14 and click on the PDF link there. And that's going to take me into some really, really useful information for in-text citation. So when you're quoting uh, a researcher's work from a specific study. And then also information regarding the references list at the end of your paper. So that's going to be the list of citations with authors, the source of publication, so the name of the journal, etc. So we'll take a look at all of that. So first of all, let's look at page 287. It's going to give you the three acceptable ways of citing references in text. So what I always like to do, I always like to mention the author, so I prefer the author date method. But there are three different acceptable ways of uh, incorporating research into your, your own work. So you can use a superscript, which you might think of it as a squared or cubed or whatever, um, but that's the, the number that's sort of above the above your sentence uh, wherever you're citing that information so if you mention the author's name you might put a superscript uh, two or three after that to indicate where that specific source is in your references at the end of the paper so in addition to superscript you can also use italic numbers to direct your reader to that uh, source of information in your references list and then also you can use author date, which we're probably most familiar with from doing research in other areas. So that actually mentions all of the authors, or well, the author, and then um, at L, which means this guy and a lot of other guys, or this uh, female researcher and a lot of other female researchers. That last name just sort of indicates the, the lead researcher or the lead scholar on a study. And then at L, you will see the rest of the names in the actual citation uh, in the references list, followed by the publication date. So you have those three options. And then if you scroll down past the CASI abbreviations, which we'll take a look at CASI momentarily, it gives more rules on how to use those three different ways of incorporating scholarly uh, information from scholarly journals. So that's something worth taking a look at uh, if you follow my procedure for getting into this uh, chapter 14 of the ACS style guide. Okay, in addition to incorporating information in your sentences and citing references in your sentences, you also have to worry about the dread references list. So let's come down to that information, and that is on page 290. It begins on page 290. And it gives you some background information on what references lists are. And you're going to want to scroll down through a lot of this. Uh, I imagine most of you are most interested in how to cite articles that are taken from databases. So we're going to go down to page 293. And if you look right here on the left hand side, retrieve from a database provider. And it also tells you to see page 318. But here's an example. If you just want a quick example of what your citation should look like. It should mention the author's last name and their first initial, kind of like APA. And then the title of the article itself, Scanning the Globe for Organic Chemistry. And then this is taken from US News and World Report, so that's the that's the publication itself. The article is not italicized, but the the publication itself, U.S. News and World Report, will be italicized and capitalized. And then you see that it was the online version. You see the publication date of that article. 
and the page number. Then you also see Business Source Premier. That's the name of the database where the article was retrieved from. And then finally, you have the URL where you access that article and the access date. So that's just a quick example of what it's going to look like to include references in your references list. And then you can also scroll down to page 318 to find a little more information about that. All right, that said, you are going to be abbreviating chemical journal names. So let's take a little bit of a look at what that's going to be like. Um, so here's a sample. Here's an example right here. Journal of Polymer Science, Part A Polymer Science. This is how Cassie prescribes us to abbreviate that particular journal. So you might be wondering, oh, can I just make it up? You know, how am I going to abbreviate or know how to abbreviate all of these different journal titles? Well, if you just Google Cassie abbreviation, you will find this right here, and the web address is cassie.cas.org slash search.jsp if you want to go there yourself. So I'm going to do a sample search here, Journal of the American Chemical Society, and I'm going to click on search, and it's going to say, do you mean this journal or do you mean this journal? Well, I mean the second one. So you click on that, and then right under abbreviated title, there's your abbreviation. So you can do a similar search for any and all of the journals that you are uh, using in your research paper. So I hope this was a helpful guide. Good luck on your research and feel free to come by the Peninsula College Library if you have any questions.